Hello, my fellow makers. We're not easing into this episode like we usually do. We're not going to talk and get to know each other. We're going to jump right in, going right into the deep end, okay? Yeah. We're going to talk about Whip It or Rip It. It was a new part of last episode, right? Whip It or Rip It was uh, I pull out these old project bags that I've had with projects in them, often not even knowing what's in them. And you guys voted on whether I should whip it, meaning it's a work in progress. Keep going, girl, finish it, which you guys overwhelmingly voted on both of those to do so. Or rip it, meaning yank it out, call it a day, say la vie, you are done. Well, we're not voting this time because I'm just going to call it. We're ripping it. We're ripping it. We're ripping it. And you know, you know what this is. Come on. And you know what? I'm not the only person out there who needs to be doing this. There are way more people who jumped on the Cozy Memories bandwagon and didn't finish it. Some of you may only have like two or three. Some of you may have a lot more. I don't know, but we all know that they're just not gonna grow up and be Cozy Memories blankets. I mean, if I didn't rip this, this might be um, you know, like a skinny scarf. Sure, why not? Kinda cute put on a snowman in my front yard or you know maybe in the middle of Illinois where I am I might find myself in a hippie convention need to blend in there you go but either way it's a blanket it will not be nope um, part of that reason is for me to have a long-term project like this it's got to be something I can just pick up and do at any time and I can do as little or as much as I'd like this doesn't fall into that category for me the miter square I know how to do it it's easy but because I put it down for so long, I had to literally read the pattern each time. And I never wanted to stop in the middle of a square, and that's just me, so I would have to finish the whole square. So it wasn't anything I could do for like five minutes at a time. So this just isn't practical for me. I loved finished Cozy Memories blanket. I do, I love them. Um, it's just not me, and I know that I am not the only person out there who needs to do this. There are more of you. Join me. Join me in this movement. Hashtag ripping my cozy memories. If you do this on Instagram, choose to do this, tag me. Spicy Homemaker. I am Melissa, the Spicy Homemaker on all social media platforms. And uh, by the way, welcome if you're new or returning viewer, or maybe you just accidentally stumbled across this crazy little show of mine. Welcome. Uh, but anyways, if you have been failed Cozy Memories blanket person, let me know in the comments below. Maybe you were successful. Let me know. Maybe you never even jumped in on this thing because you knew you were smarter than me. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Uh-oh. There went all the show notes. <laughs> okay. So anyways, another thing you need to be aware of, especially if you're a new viewer. Old viewers, you're probably, you're probably going to understand this, but I have uh, recently noticed in my YouTube notifications that I am now a very frequent commenter on young boys' gaming channels. Yeah, that's me, Spicy Homemaker. You're going to see my picture on a lot of these gaming sites where these young boys who play video games and talk throughout the whole thing and kids love this. I have no idea why this is a thing, but it is. And you might see my little face, you know, hi, saying stuff like, cool dude, where'd you get that? <sighs> yeah, that would be my son, Ashton, who's almost 11. I let him use my profile to go on YouTube because that way I can monitor what he's doing and what he's posting. But unfortunately, it's my picture. And so now I am on a plethora of gaming platforms as a very social butterfly, I might add. I've been trying to delete them as I go, especially when they respond back because, hello, isn't that a little creepy to have a middle-aged woman commenting on these? I'm pretty sure the FBI is monitoring me as a potential perv, okay? That's how bad it is right now. I have subscribed to numerous farting channels as well. I have boys. It's just, anyways, it's really not me, I promise, guys. I have not lost my marbles. Well, you know, maybe a couple, but not be I didn't go down that road. I haven't been drinking profusely at night. <sighs> Just 
thank you, Ashton. Thank you, my son, for making me a thing in the gaming community. Who knows? Maybe we'll turn little gamers into knitters. I don't know. But if you see it, maybe if you see it, let me know so I can take it down. Ah, life with kids, right? But, you know, here's the thing. Whenever I'm not pursuing my newest passion of following young gamers on YouTube, I sometimes go to Ikea. Not that often, but sometimes I do. And on my last trip, look what I got. Oh, this beautiful cubicle for yarn storage. And I love it. I have not had a good storage system for my yarn ever. And it's not even all in there yet. But I just love seeing all my pretties in one spot. I mean, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how happy this makes me. Even Ruby will come in. She's always come in off and on, my daughter who's four, and looks at pretty yarn. We love doing that. We just do. It's our thing. And it makes me excited. And I love having this background so much better than that awful, beigey, plain background I've had for so long. Which, by the way, brings me to a couple things. Uh, very soon, I'll probably have one more podcast before Rhinebeck is in less than four weeks and then after Rhinebeck the plan is to start a, my new channel which will be on this channel but it's gonna be refreshed and renamed which I have said this forever I know guys bear with me but that is a plan okay so you've been warned um, but let's talk about what is going on really quick some in the Ravelry group spicy homemaker Ravelry group we have a Christmas sock knit along that goes through December 15th just a chatter thread you post your pictures you post what you're working on you comment on people's uh, socks and I draw a winner once a month and I did that already for this month Janet from Connecticut who is the yarn taxi driver you get to pick I love this donations uh, from they're so different so different that I know because of personal taste you're either pick one or the other because and I kind of love that I love giving you guys choices. But this is Artistic Lily. Um, this is her tropical vibe and her gotta have socks fingering weight. It's 80% super wash merino and 20% nylon. How fun is that? Oh my gosh, that's just a happy yarn, right? And then from my friend Karen from Lavender Mar Mountain Yarns, she also donated a skein to the podcast. And this is so autumnal. Look at this and it's called Wild Orchid. And it is also um, merino nylon mix, 7525. Look at all those gorgeous autumn colors. Oh. So Janet, send me a Ravelry message. Let me know which one you choose and give me your address and I will get this out in the mail to you. Thank you so much and congratulations. And ladies, thank you so much for the donations. I love donations. They help out quite a bit. Uh, the Advent Swap. It is closed out now. Everyone's been matched up. If you have not been in the group lately, you need to go in there, fill out your questionnaire, send it to your partner, and check the rules, please. Rules and guidelines. Let's be good, everybody. So check it out, okay? And before I forget, oh my goodness, some dear viewer sent me a book, a children's book in the mail. My daughter, Ruby, is a bit of a klepto, okay? Not a bit. She really is. It's, it's actually pretty bad. She's four. But she just acquires our stuff in the house and she'll find little hiding spots and she, it just, I cannot tell you how many things disappear. We always find them. But the last little hiding spot she had was under my bed. I had all this great a little treasure trove under my bed I had no idea about. Well, someone sent me a book and it was wonderful. I loved it. It was a children's book uh, with knitting in it and so excited. I was showing Ruby. And that night, the whole thing disappeared because Ruby knew it was hers, which is good, but I have no idea where it is yet. It will definitely show up, but I don't know who sent it to me. That is what's killing me. So please send me a Ravelry message so I can properly thank you because I love that. That was so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I'm so sorry that my daughter just... This isn't the first time something like this has happened. Oh, I do not know what that's going to look like when she's a teenager. I know she's not going to steal when she's a teenager. Good Lord. I hope not. We'll just be selling a jail. We all share a jail cell together. She'll be stealing things and I'll be in there for stalking young children on gaming sites. I don't know. Either way, thank you for the book. 
All right, we've also had a, a number of gorgeous patterns donated and I drew winners for that and I'm gonna show those right now. The winners of the shawl patterns were the Chili Shawl by Connie from Chili Knits is the winner of that was Beanie Queen B, who is just from New Zealand. The Asphodel hat, which is Barbara from the Knitting I Love podcast. Vicky won that, and she is AKA Mama Vic. And then we have the, Yule, the Victorian Yuletide ornament collection, which was from Jen Sheelan, who also has a podcast. And it was from, um, the Ravelry name is Samoom, and it was Karen from Denmark. So congratulations, ladies. And thank you so much to the makers and designers of those patterns. Those are beautiful. The prompts you guys answered were amazing. I have some questions from one of those that I'm gonna answer at the end of the podcast. But thank you so much. I loved reading them. They were great. All right. Oh my goodness. Knit faster, everyone. Ryan Beck is coming. It has less than four weeks away and oh my goodness is it going to be jammed pack i cannot wait i will get in on thursday and friday we have needles up which is going to be a great event i'm so excited i'm going to be giving away so many goodies to the people in line and chatting along with jody and tracy from the grocery girls and amber from the yarn hoarder we're going to be outside mingling with you guys and um just keeping you company and giving away prizes so that's going to be lots and lots of fun Indian Untangled after that, and then we have Rhinebeck the next day. I will be at the podcaster meetup, which is 1 p.m. If you see me at any point at Rhinebeck, please come up and say hi to me. It's I'm not going to be like, who are you? This is so weird. No, say hi. I, I love to meet people, and uh, I promise I won't make it weird. I mean, I know I talk to myself here alone, camera. I'm a little weird. But I won't make you feel weird, okay? Love to meet you. Uh, I am horrifyingly afraid of getting people's names wrong. So please introduce yourself, uh, especially on a day like Rhinebeck, because I have a lot of friends that are gonna be there and everyone's names get jumbled around in my head. I know people's names, but I just, I have, I mean, it's a, it's a really bad fear. I almost don't use people's names because I'm so afraid I'm gonna use the wrong name when I meet them. I hate that because I like to use people's names. It's your name, right? So <laughs> help me, please. Have, have some mercy on this woman with a memory of the size of a gnat, please. Okay. If you don't remember my name, that's okay. Last year I got, uh, someone thought I was a suburban stitcher, which was really cool, Diane. Uh, someone also thought that I was a Jennifer from Down Cellar Studio Podcast. So I didn't care. Those are good people to be mistaken for. Won't hurt my feelings. But anyways, uh, I will be there and I have a couple shopping tips that I wanna give you guys and a general tip. Three of them for Ryan Beck. Okay, gave you three tips last podcast, last episode, let's do three more. Okay, so for shopping, a couple things you need to know, especially if you're new. Jenny the Potter and Miss Babs, those are like really big on the scene and people rush their booths in the very beginning. Um, Saturday morning, if you really want something from Jenny the Potter, you need to get there early on Saturday morning and you need to go directly to her booth. She sells out fast and there will not be a resupply. Um, that's the first place I would go to. If you really have your heart set on a Jenny the Potter mug or whatever. The other thing, Miss Babs, unless you want her Rhinebeck Unlimited colorway, or her Unlimited, her Rhinebeck Exclusive colorway, don't worry about it. You're going to see a line that is crazy long. Oh my gosh, I waited in line for two hours on my first Rhinebeck. And here's what was crazy, is the at the end of the day that day, there was tons of yarn left, tons. Sunday, tons of yarn. I am convinced that Miss Babs comes in a semi truck with yarn because people are buying it like crazy. She just, I don't know where she stores this yarn, but she brings a lot of it. It's not even gonna be like slim pickings on Sunday. There will be a ton of it. Unless you want the Rhinebeck colorway, wait, just wait. Okay, go somewhere in the middle of the day. You might have a long line, but it won't be as long or go towards the end of it. There will be plenty of yarn, I promise. Okay, so the other thing, the last tip I wanna leave you with is a general tip. So you can go online on the website and look at events and schedules. 
which I highly recommend, especially if there's certain things you you know you want to do because they don't repeat, some things don't repeat themselves throughout the, the, the two days. So if there's something you share, like they have book signings and there's talks and there's like um, dog shows and there's lo leaping llamas and uh, alpaca contests, it's pretty neat to see. There's just all kinds of stuff. I mean, tons and it's overwhelming and you're just, you're going to be so overwhelmed by everything that's there. It, don't choose all these events. You're just going to kill yourself. But maybe there's one or two you want to go to. Look at it, see where it is, and get that time down so you know ahead of time. Or when you get your pamphlet when you're there, because I'll give you a little booklet, look at that. And it'll tell you where everything is. It's just really good to look through that ahead of time or look through it while you're there. Just a helpful little thing. And that is it. Okay, let's jump into our FOs, shall we? So, speaking of our Christmas sock cow that we talked about earlier, check it out. I have a pair. I only have one sock blocker. It is beyond me why I only have one sock blocker. That is really not a true sock blocker. It's more decorative than practical. But it, yeah, it is true. So I have two socks finished. These are my Christmas socks. Yay! I have a pair finished. And I got to tell you, okay, let's just talk about this. My favorite pair of socks I've ever knit. True statement. Um, love these socks love this yarn so the yarn is from Katrina of Cat's Kettle and this is called put the lights on the Christmas tree and the pattern is by Sarah of the Naughty Gnome uh, crafts and she also has a podcast and this is called Cape Cod socks and it's a, as you can see it's a basket weave texture and it's heel and gusset and it's also I think she ooh, I don't want to mess it up there's a particular He'll, he'll flop and gusset, but there's a particular style to this that I cannot, the uh, name of it is escaping me at the moment. Anyways, and the toe is, let me see if I can show you on this one probably. I guess she said you call it a spiral toe maybe? Maybe you can see that. Anyways, here's my thing about my socks. When I put them on after making them, um, I don't usually like them right away. I don't like how they fit. It takes like a couple days and then I break them in and then they feel great. All my socks are fine, right? These are the first socks I ever put on and they fit perfectly. So I have a pair of, I've been doing a lot of afterthought heels, which we'll talk about that later. I've never been a fan, still not. I had one other pair of heel flap and gusset socks and you know what? I love them. I really do. I have a high in, uh, arch, so these are better for me. The toes of socks, I have not been happy with the toes of socks. If you would have ever showed me this and, and said a spiral toe, I would have swore I wouldn't have liked it. I would have just thought, I'm not gonna like this. As you can see, there's this very faint line here. There's decreases done here, here, and here, and four sides, which seem weird, but these, they're single, so you can't feel them at all. Um, but they fit perfectly. There's no kitchen near the top. You decrease till you get to eight stitches, and you put the thread through, loop it up, or pull it tight, and weave in your ends. Uh, it just fits perfectly. I cannot get over how perfectly these fit. I love them. Um, what did I say? Okay, so I knit the medium size. Uh, you cast on 66 stitches for this. And by the way, guys, you know what I forgot? And I realized this way late in the game. Maybe one of you guys caught this. But remember when we voted on which um, contrasting heel and toe I was going to do? Yeah. So this was what it was supposed to be. I totally forgot. Totally forgot. Would have loved it. But you know what? I'm glad I used a bunch of this yarn because I really do like that colorway a lot. This is how much I had left. I didn't weigh it, but it's a pretty good chunk. Anyways, um, this is living or was living in my bag for my friend Lauren, New York, which I will see at Ryan Beck. Hello, Lauren. And she does have an Etsy shop and she does yarn too. I just love this. And... Uh, the other thing I want to tell you about this is I realize I'm a longer cuff girl. This is what I measured it. I already forgot, but I think it's like seven inches. Maybe I like about a seven to eight inch cuff. Maybe I like that. This is perfect in every way. I love these socks. I finished one and put it on my foot and was in just in so much awe. That I just left it on my foot while I continued to knit the other one for like over an hour that night. Loved it. Anyways. Uh, oh, one other thing I want to tell you guys. So let's talk about these little suckers. 
Hold on. Ooh, oh, they're holding something. Okay, my Carbons Fixed Needles. Yeah, it popped right out. Popped right out. And I gotta tell you, I'm kind of falling out of love with my Carbons. Um, I think this is kind of just a natural progression as a knitter that you do. Um, I loved wooden needles because they weren't slippery. Because when you're a newer knitter or maybe not experienced, you do want your stitches to stay on your needles. And wooden needles definitely do that for you. Because you have the tendency to let needles or stitches just kind of fly off and you just don't even know how it happens and stuff. So I really liked wooden needles for a really long time. Then I got to Carbons, which was a little slipperier, slip, more slippy but not as much as metal ones. And now I am firmly in the metal category. Love them. But anyways, I had to go and finish with DPNs because I was somewhere where I didn't have extra needles and it was a conglomeration of carbons and wooden. It was crazy, but I finished it. It was okay. That is, I don't know what else to say about this other than I love it. I highly recommend the Cape Cod Pattern by Sarah of Naughty Gnome. Love it. So I have a pair of Christmas socks. Hooray! Let's talk about my next finished object. This was from the Whip It or Rip It section, which I was so embarrassed about because they were like almost completely done. I think I just needed a toe, didn't I? Again, sorry, no sock blocker. But this is Vanilla Sock, um, and this is in the Rhinebeck Rainbow colorway from Canon Hand Dyes. I bought this colorway at my very first Rhinebeck, so I just think that's really cool. Love this colorway so much. It's on a Stellina base. Afterthought heel. I used Susan B. Anderson's um, Smooth Operator. And so let's just talk about a few things here. Did I do it on that one? No. I'm kind of starting to go to... Um, two knit, two purl for the cuff too that I like, but these are both one uh, single rib. That's the word I'm looking for. Anyways, uh, this is a short cuff for me. I'll wear them. I like them. I'll wear them with my clear conv converse, probably even at Rhinebeck, but um, I just wish they were longer. Afterthought heels. Uh, I don't like, I don't like afterthought heels. I just don't. I don't like knitting them. I don't like putting them in. Um, they are nice for when you're doing self-striping. They do, especially when you're doing contrasting heel and toe. You can do it with a heel flap and gusset, but um, I do really like how they look like with self-striping, which I didn't do here because I wanted all of the colors here. And if you notice, let's see, can I find that? Let me show you what I did. Yeah, you probably can't tell. I pulled from the wrong end because I was having these match up perfectly, and I pulled in from the wrong end of the ball, and look at my, my heels are different, which who cares, but... Yeah, they're done, you guys. You voted unanimously to whip it, and I did. Or I think I just said I was going to, but a few of you told me I should too. So those got done pretty quickly. Okay, so let's move on to our next project. This was on the Whip It or Rip It, and I just had the ribbing done, and I pulled out the Treehouse Hat by Melody Hoffman, who is Mandarin. I think that's what she goes by on social media. And the yarn is from the Woolen Rabbit. I believe it's like Chimney Smoke or Chimney Sweep. That's the colorway. And it's like a cashmere wool blend. Oh my gosh, so soft, you guys. And you guys told me to whip it, finish it. A few of you said rip it, but I did want to finish this, so I was glad. And this, this really knit up fast. Okay, I have never done cables until this hat. So she has these very simple little tree motifs, and that's where you do your cables. There is only... Let me see real quick. One tree that's a little wonky. The rest of them came out beautifully, but the wonkiness is only something that I would notice or another knitter if they were like really examining it. And then that, it still shows up fine. But this was a great pattern for doing cables the first time. Really good. Uh, well, you'll understand in a minute. It is easy. It's an easy cable pattern for sure. And I had never done cables, but everyone had always talked about cabling without a cable needle. And so I may have been doing some of this at work because when we have meetings on the phone, I'll knit because nobody can see me. And I needed to cable and I didn't have a cable needle with me. So yes, it is very easy to do. Easy to do. I used one of my DPNs and cabled, but I do prefer using the cable needles. When I came home, I found a cable needle, used it. I do like that better. I like the finished results. I loved the yarn, um, but... I'm gonna just show you this real quick. I'm not gonna show you the whole pattern or anything, but check this out. You 
see how that's all those are rows and they're just all jammed together there's no like it really runs together it is um i i really wish there was like a space between each round for the directions because they run together so much there's no like bold round one you know there's no delineation between where you're at so i really had to be very careful particularly since I've never done cables, where I was. So I would use like either two index cards or like you could do the, the, that tape that comes off and on real easy, almost like what you would do with charts, and like box in the round I was at because it's, it's, it's really that bad. It is like just scrunched together. So I was not a fan of that part. Um, read through the entire pattern first because there was a part that I did get hung up on. It is a little... It's not hard, especially if you've had some experience knitting. You just have to be careful following it. Look for all the rounds because they don't go in order. Some of them are on another section and some of them are definitely like just not where you would think they would be. So read through because I actually thought I was missing some rounds and they're not. They're all there. And it also comes with a chart, which is really nice. This is a good one for charts and so is... Um, the Naughty Gnome pattern, Sarah's. If you have never done charts, that's a great way to break into them because it's so easy. Trust me, guys, especially with that basket weave, it's just a knit and pearl. It's just a really good way to introduce yourself into charts. But anyways, um, not not a fan of how... Yeah, if I could have copied and pasted those directions into a Word document just to separate them, I would have done that. It would have just made my life a lot easier. But regardless, it's just a hat, so it was, it was manageable. And... Let's see, how much yarn? I used one ball of yarn from them. Oh, here it is, here's my little tag. Tell me a little bit more about the woolen rabbit. Yeah, chimney sweep, it's in their opal base. It's a worsted weight yarn, merino silk cashmere. And this is how much I had left. Now, first time doing cables, this hat's probably a little tighter than it should be on me. It fits Ruby rather good. I posted a picture of it on Instagram. It's supposed to have a pom-pom. And I will put a pom-pom on this, but this is the one I envisioned on it. And you know what? When I was finished, I just didn't really, I wasn't crazy about this with it. I love this pom-pom, but uh, I don't know. I think I either would want something a little bit more, I don't know what I want really on here. I think I might go with just what the pattern says and use the yarn I have left over to make a pom-pom. But then now I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, maybe I do like that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like this or should I make a pom-pom out of the yarn? Part of me thinks this should be more contrasty, but then I'm thinking if I did the one that's out of the yarn, it would match perfectly. So I'm, I'm either going matching perfectly in my head or high contrast, like a white one, white pom-pom, furry one on top. What do you think? Okay, but that was that. My first cabling project done. Okay, so that is it for finished objects. Let's move on to whips. Now, I don't really have any true whips right now because really I kind of completed the projects and I just finished up one sock yesterday and that was pretty much it. I was done. I do have that vest going on the needles. It went in time out because of a silly mistake I made, not the pattern. Um, I did order buttons for it, but I don't really have anything to show you on that. So I'm not going to show you that. However, I have been doing some little experimentation in the kitchen that I'll share with you for real quick. I have been playing around with some self-striping in the kitchen. And I dyed up, th well, let me show you my first colorway, which <clears throat> I was very pleased with how the stripes turned out, but these were not the colors I wanted at all. Like, this is not what I had in mind. Not that I have a problem with these colors per se, it just was not the colors I was going for. Like, not even close. And then uh, my second attempt was, and I wanted to knit it up to see what it looked like, was this. And um, it's kind of funny. This is supposed to be two stripes right here. And there was two different dyes, two different companies even, and one had a very different name from the other. One's supposed to be like slate blue, the other one's supposed to be a gray. But as you can see, it you can kind of see it. Um, they, you can see some, I don't know if you'll be able to tell in there. Yeah, you can kind of. There is a bit of definition in between the lines, but not a, not a big one. It looks like one big blue line. Not what I was trying to go for again. But again, I'm happy with how it came out. So I've been playing around in the kitchen, doing a little self-striping dye, dyeing, um, and that's been a lot of fun. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. 
that's really a work in progress because it is a work in progress because I'm going to go in and experiment some more and try to get some more colors down and that kind of thing. It's just, it's fun, isn't it? It's not fun just trying new things and, you know, learning new things and it's what we do, right? We're makers. We can never just keep doing one thing. It's just not how we're wired. But that is going to lead us into acquisitions, gifts, donations, all the goodies that I've gotten uh, recently. I've been really good with not buying yarn. Um, and I have kind of broken the seal. I'm, I'm going to Rhinebeck for crying out loud too, so I don't need to be buying any yarn really. However, having said that, let's show you, first of all, let's show you this. I got a bag by Darlene from Austin. Uh, Bags by Awesome Granny, Darlene, who also has a podcast I mentioned with her friend Carrie. And I told her, uh, she sent me two bags for one for the show and one as a donation. I already had them and she didn't know that. And it was no big deal. I just was like, you know, do you want me to mail it back to you? Because you don't have to, you know, she's a maker. This is her business. <sighs> Not only did she tell me to keep them, she sent me another one. Darlene, it is beautiful to look at that. Look how fun that is. I cannot believe she did that. Oh, look at that. I got stars inside. Oh, this makes me so happy. Darling, thank you so much. This is a big size bag too. Oh, I love it. But yeah, so that was a very big surprise. The other thing I got was from my friend Andy who does the gorgeous sock blanks. Okay guys, um, the fact that I didn't have this sooner is really just a tragedy because this has always been something I've wanted. It is my absolute favorite that she's ever dyed and I've always wanted this and I mentioned something to her about it and she sent this to me. That good woman sent this to me. I told her I wanted to buy it and she just gave it to me because she's awesome and we're friends. So. <laughs> But look, oh, you guys, I I gotta tell you the truth. I don't, I like knitting from sock blanks, but um, I don't know if I'm gonna knit this. I really don't. I might knit some of it. I've seen people knit them, and then I saw one person make like a drawstring bag out of what's left over, because I know I won't use all of this for a pair of socks. But isn't it beautiful? Oh, just gorgeous. Butterflies and blue, oh, love it. Henny, you are so talented. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Guys can get some of those at Needles Up. They will all be there. She's bringing a lot of them. And uh, let's see, let's see. Since we're on yarn, let's keep doing yarn. Um, okay, this is more from Lavender Mountains Yarn and Artistic Lily. They said I got to keep something, so I'm really excited. Uh, Artistic Lily let me keep, oh my goodness, I took the tag, or the tag came off of this. And I saw that just a minute ago. It came off. Oh well. This is from her vintage collection. Both of them are. This is Vintage Force. I'm pretty sure this is Vintage Nights. But look at these, you guys. And these are her singles. They are um, Superwash Merino. 100% Superwash Merino singles. Aren't they gorgeous? I think these are going to be a shawl together, I think. Or I might put one more color in it that's more um, maybe semi-solid, tonal, something like that. But I love these and I love them together. Oh my gosh, Ellie, thank you so much. These are beautiful. And you know how I was telling you my fear <clears throat> about names? I think I told you guys that, didn't I? That I have a fear of getting people's names wrong. I think I did that with Lavender Mountain Yarn now. It's Linda. Mm. Anyways. Oh gosh, you guys. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, look what she gave me. This is red wine. Is that not beautiful? It's like a, oh, I don't know, a deep, it's, a, I, I, I can't look at it. Just look, because it's like a deep pink red. I think this is beautiful, and it's definitely a semi-solid. I love these specks of cream and white throughout here. Oh my gosh little progress keeper on there. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. This is going to go a great... I don't know what I want to put this with. This will probably be paired with something else I'm thinking in a shawl. Probably. It's also fingering in her merino nylon base. I love it. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And 
Then uh, this surprised me. Okay, I got this in the mail. Um, apparently I bought this. No memory at all. None. Like, at all. It's a faint memory of looking at it. I can't even remember what website I was on. But I bought one single skein of Juniper Moon Farm Moonshine Chunky Baby Alpaca Wool and Silk Blend. Now, I have been wanting to try Juniper Moon Farm. I do like grays. I have zero plans for this. Um, I can tell you this is so ridiculously soft and beautiful. Um, it's a very soft gray, and this yarn is just, it's, oh my goodness, I could pet this all day. But, um, yeah, surprise, Melissa. Look what you bought. <laughs> but I have this now to add to my collection. And then let me show you what my friend Barbara, ooh, look at this too, from Artistic Lily. She gave me a little gauge needle. I love these. I keep these in my bags all the time. I love this, so that's definitely going to one of my bags. Okay, Barbara from Knitting I Love, she comes up with some really cool gadgets. And she said she was watching my Whip It or Rip It segment and um, like I said, I have project bags that I literally don't know what's in them anymore until I open them up. And she said it came up, she came up with the idea of creating these, they're like keychains, right? And you can put them on your bag. And she has ones that say sock, shawl, whatever. So it identifies what is in your project bag. Is that not pure genius? That is such a great idea. Knitting I love. She has on her own website and everything. She lives in Ireland. A Polish woman living in Ireland. Then I got these little tags to put on your, um, sew them on like your hat and stuff. She does that all the time on a lot of her projects and they're so cute. This is like stars and a cupcake and a snowflake. Oh, how cute. I need to do this on stuff that I knit for my kids too, especially hats because kids lose hats and I hate that, especially if it's hand knit. And then I got like a true keychain because I don't really do keychains um, and definitely not bulky ones, but this is Happy Knitter. And so I am definitely putting this on my keychain. I love this. Barbara, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This was so great. Love them. Well, guys, I think that wraps us up here. That is, that's it. I am going to do a little bit of what Kristen from the Yarngasm will call blather because I got a few things to wrap up with with just what's going on. Um, but there is no more yarn and knitting. But let's just talk, shall we? I am drinking coffee because it's what you do when it's 97 degrees outside. We are getting a burst of hot weather lately. I just need to stay awake. That's all I know. It's been a long week. Not a hard week, just a long week. But I had my eye surgery. I had PRK done on one eye, which is basically sand the top layer of your eyeball off, for real. And it grows back uh, to the first two days. Pretty horrendous. Way worse than I thought it would be. And then after the third day, felt like a human again. But um, it's very unusual. It's an alternative to people who aren't candidates for LASIK. And I apparently wasn't. So you don't, not everybody, everyone's experience is different with the surgery. But for me, uh, my vision still isn't like, it's not perfect at all. And I didn't really have bad vision, but I'm not wearing my glasses anymore. But it, it can take up to like three months to a year. Uh, usually about three months, everybody says their vision is sharp and good. So I'm really glad I got this done way ahead of Brian Beck. I thought that I would get this done and go camping that weekend. Yeah, no, because you had, I couldn't wear makeup for a week. So I went to work for a week with no makeup. Wow. Yeah, I did that. And you know what? I didn't want to either because you do not want to rub your eye. It scabs over, which sounds gross. You can't see it. You can't feel that. But apparently if you accidentally rub that off, you will feel that. Um, so I didn't want to put anything near my eye. That was okay. Now that I've sufficiently grossed everybody out, I'm doing better. Um, we did end up going camping like a week later and I took a whole weekend off, which I can't remember the last time I've done that. It was beautiful. And it's it's been, it's been busy, but I have scheduled a little bit of downtime, so that's been nice. But you know, and so just going on and on about what I've been doing, let me just, let's answer those questions that you guys gave me on, um, pattern. Okay. So I, one of the prompts for the pattern, the giveaway was ask me any question. You can ask me anything. I don't care what it is. Just ask me a question. And I'll answer it. And I didn't want to mess up the thread by answering the question. So I'm going to answer them here. 
So, here we go. Here are the questions. They're pretty straightforward and simple. Shawl or sweater? I said shawl. That's my first thing, but I feel a big sweater push coming. I really do. We'll see if that comes to fruition. My favorite TV at the moment. Now, this is what's funny. I stay up late at night sometimes. I don't try not to do that as much anymore because I am not a spring chicken and I will suffer the next day if I try to go to work on very limited sleep. But having said that, when I am up late, I tend to watch just whatever's on TV or Hulu and Netflix. I really like those. And here's what I've been watching lately. Um, I just recently stumbled upon the Montana home. I like HGTV. And Montana home's on late at night. And it's basically people who buy houses for couples or people who want to buy homes in Montana, but they fix them up for them. It's pretty cool. And I, I think Montana is a gorgeous, gorgeous area. Um, I used to be stationed in North Dakota when I was in the Air Force, and I have visited some friends in Montana. It's just beautiful, beautiful country. So I liked seeing that. Okay, uh, something that's kind of not in my usual realm that I'm watching now is Van Helsing. I am not into those vampire zombie movie movies or shows at all. And Van Helsing is a vampire movie show. Yeah, I started watching. I watched the whole first season and I, I liked it. I like it. I do. Another one is Stitchers, which is on Hulu. That's a really cool... Uh, I don't even know how to spell. Okay, so they all work for NSA and... They stitch a girl, that's what they call it, stitching stuff in her head and she like gets stitched into a dead person's, like there's lingering memory in a dead person's mind and she goes into it to find out who their murderer is or whatever and then there's a whole NSA spin to it. So I like that one, I've been watching that and then I really got into, I'm going to blame my kids because uh, my boys, I don't think I would have ever watched this without them, I didn't watch it with them. But they are very into comics and superheroes and whatnot. So there is the Daredevil show, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage. They all have their own shows. I watched all of them, and they all combined together to have a show called The Defenders. I have watched all of those. And that is what I have watched over the last, well, I don't know, few months, I guess, couple months, maybe. Okay, next question. Have I ever crocheted socks? Nope. Can't imagine doing that either, really. And I do like crochet a little bit, um, doing the granny stripe blanket, and I want to learn more, but I really can't fathom crocheting socks because I am a knitter first. I am. That's what I learned, so maybe that's why. Cashmere or alpaca? Cashmere. Cashmere. I love cashmere. And let's see. Are boys or girls easier and why? Well, okay, so my experience is, for those of you who don't know, is I have three kids. I have my son, Kylan, who is 15, my son, Ashton, who's almost 11, and Ruby, who is four. I think boys are easier right now in this part of the game. Boys are just straightforward. It's not that they're perfect, but they are just very point A to point B, in my opinion. And God love them for it, you know? Uh, we can usually clear things up quickly and move on. Ruby from a very early age, you know, and I know that all girls and boys aren't like this. This is just my limited experience. Is all, oh my gosh, I already feel like there's hormones and drama and oh my goodness. Just, you got to come at her from so many different angles and oh, there's a lot of girl in that girl. So yeah, that's my experience. I say boys. <laughs> Okay, uh, Sue said she really liked my children's names. She wanted to know why I chose them or how I chose them and why. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm from the Midwest. There's a reason I'm telling you that. A lot of our middle names are singular, uh, one syllable. So my name's like Melissa Lynn because when you're yelling at your child, it's got to like roll. When you're a mom and you're angry, you know, it's Melissa Lynn. And then if you're really in trouble, you know, you add the last name. When you have that single syllable middle name, it doesn't matter what you call your kid, the middle name will flow. So I was thinking about that when I named my kids. <laughs> so my son, Kyland, I literally picked that name out of a book of 10,000 baby names. There was no meaning to it or anything. I just really liked that name. Yeah, it's a great story, huh? Middle name, I could not come up with a middle name to save my life, and I let one of my friends, my best friend, choose his middle name, which is Jay. 
J-A-Y-E. She put the E on the end to make it unique. So, Kylan J. Yeah, there's not a real exciting story on that one. Oh, it gets better. My son Ashton. <sighs> he was hard because um, I had this list of names. It was pretty short for boys. And I did not know what I wanted to name him. I could not decide between like three names. And I thought it would be one of those moments. I'm like, I'm taking this list to the hospital and I'll just know when I see him. Yeah, no, that didn't work out at all. Not at all. Like, I'm just looking at him. I'm like, I have no idea. Like, I'm more confused now than I was before. So finally, I pick Ashton from the list. But then I have no middle name. And I'm just, you know, I just had a baby. Your hormones are all out of whack. And again, middle name's even worse. And so I was just going to name him Ashton Michael because I needed a middle name, which went against everything Midwestern in me. But then I'm watching Grey's Anatomy. And that's where I came up with Ashton Gray. These are deep stories, I tell you. Okay, and so my daughter Ruby, who is Ruby Jane. Um, I met two little girls when I was in the Air Force back when I was like 19. That was a couple decades ago. And before that was really a trend, you know, using some of the old fashioned names, like that's a really big thing now. Just remember hearing those names and seeing them on little and hearing it with those little girls because that's something I would have never liked at that age. But it was so, I thought it was so adorable then. And it just stuck with me. It was always Ruby. I don't know why. Ruby was that. I just loved that name. And to me, there was just never, ever, it, I just always knew it would be Ruby Jane. I just knew. I just didn't have a girl. So when I had a girl, and Ruby was a surprise, meaning um, I didn't find out what I was having on purpose, but I always knew it, it, it was going to be Ruby Jane. And that's really it. There's no family ties to any of these names. People do ask me if Ruby's a family name, and it's not. <laughs> so those are the stories behind my children's names. Um, someone asked me what made me giggle this week, which was one of the prompts for another one of the pattern giveaways. I asked you guys what made you laugh this week, which was, was I loved reading that. But anyways, uh, this just happened a couple days ago. My daughter, I do what I call mom cursing. You know, you make up words and... Well, I heard my daughter for the first time. I don't, I've never heard my sons ever do mom cursing, ever, even when they were little. But Ruby just did something the other day and she goes, son of a boo-boo. And I, you know, she starts out with son of a, and I was like, oh, and I don't curse around her. So, but son of a boo-boo, that, that made me laugh. That did. And I probably shouldn't be okay with that because it really sounds pretty abrupt up front until you hear the rest of it. But anyways, that made me laugh. Okay, favorite childhood memory. It was weird. You know how when someone asks you the question like that, like my mind's blank. It's not like I don't have any to choose from, but the one that came to mind, it's probably just because now as I'm older, I realize I, I love my grandmas. I always love spending time with them, but I realize how much I didn't, um, how much I didn't take advantage of certain things in a good way. Like um, one grandma crocheted and she did teach me to chain stitch. I remember that. One of my grandmas was a prolific uh, sewist. She would sew all my clothes and dresses until I was like five or six. And she also did beautiful quilts. But anyways, it, it, I, I realize now as I'm older, some of those things that I never got to share with my grandma and just kind of bums me out. It really does. Um, but anyways, because neither one of them are with me anymore. I do remember my, my grandma that lived in Florida, I, I went down there one time by myself to visit her for like a week or something. And she would, when I say she spoiled me rotten, I mean she spoiled me rotten. There wasn't anything she deni denied me. And for whatever reason, when I was there this time, I don't ever remember even eating these anywhere else. I wanted cheese and mayonnaise sandwiches. Like American cheese, the little fake cheese slice between two pieces of white bread with mayonnaise. Ugh. That's all I ate when I was down there. I was a cheap guest at least, right? But I remember that. Because I just remember sitting at the table with my grandma. And just, you know, grandmas make you feel really, really special. It's like I was the only person that mattered at that time. You know, you're little. You're, you're young. And it's those things really just makes you feel good when you're a kid. And I just love my grandma. So I remember that, that just was kind of a nice memory to bring back. Kind of surprised me. I didn't. I like to think of that one through. Okay, my favorite thing to knit as a gift. Um, so I've knit a few gifts, and the ones I always tend to go towards are shawl and mitts, or mittens. 
that's what I like. They're pretty quick. Um, I usually knit for other knitters. I've knit a couple gifts for non-knitters, but yeah, those are mine. And that is it. That is all I have for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I enjoyed spending time with you and um, that's all I have. Until next time, bye.